What is up? I'm Robert DeLong, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. I've been wanting to sit with you for a while. Awesome. Well, here we and are. Then, and then you disappeared for a while. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> where have you been? Where have I been? Well, I've been uh, hiding out in my uh, studio dungeon, uh, writing music, and, yeah. uh, you know, doing the occasional, like, fly-out gig, uh, you know, festivals and whatnot. But, right. uh, but I'm back, baby. I'm glad you're back, and you're black with well, you're back. Well, you're black. You're back with a new EP. <laughs> I'm wearing all black. This is true. I am back with a new EP. Uh, See you in the future, which yeah. just came out uh, two days ago, which right. is amazing. Um, yeah, and it feels good. Feels good to put out new music. Now this EP, like I love the fact that you went into the studio with Ricky Reed, right. um, which I wish he would go back and do some wallpaper as well. And you went into the studio with Tim Pugnata, which I wish he would go back and do some music as well. <laughs> <laughs> so take me into the studio. Uh, you know, what was it like collaborating with with these like geniuses uh, in the studio? I mean, it's amazing. You know, Tim, I worked with before. Uh, we worked on the my tune "Don't Wait Up" uh, from our last record, so we already had a good rapport. And he actually is uh, right around North Hollywood here. Uh, he has a dope studio, and he's he's so much fun. He's he's just like a master of his craft, and right. it's just very like, you know, the, the the two songs that I went went in with him uh, had already been written, but we kind of completely redefined what they were, which is great. Right. Um, and yeah, working with him is just like a good fun hang. Uh, Ricky Reed was literally, you know, it was kind of a you know, random connection through the label or whatever, went to his house, studio, and, uh, I mean, he, it, it was great. It was like, I showed up, we were at, you know, he was kind of talking about, like, what, what are you writing? What are you into right now? And I was yeah. like, yeah, you know, and I never write, I think one of the things I said to him was like, I never write, uh, like, relationship songs about romance or anything like that. And he's like, all right, let's do it today. And I was <laughs> like, all right, here we go. And it was so fun. It was so cool. And he, he totally got the vibe, like, immediately. And he's just so quick, like, he'll hear something uh, like a songwriting idea and be like, no, that's not the thing. Yeah. And like, this would be the thing. And you're like, oh, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah, so it's tight. Now, being that that was the first time that you kind of got personal in the sense of a relationship or a love song, um, you know, how challenging was that for you to put it to paper and then let alone like record it? You know, I, I think because the, the vibe was so cool in the room and it was uh, Ricky and, and my friend Tom Payton, who I've worked with before, um, it was just great. It was cool. Like They kind of both understood where I'm coming from and, you know, we knew how to, twist the idea so it didn't feel cheesy to me or something like that and yeah it was great it was it was fun and it was natural and I, I think it's a dope song right now with the tracks on there you also collaborated with Kay Flay another artist that I really love she's actually in town tonight um, but you know what was that collaborate uh, collaboration like with her and what was it about her that you wanted to collaborate with her you know I'd been a fan of her f for for a hot minute and we ran into each other at a festival a couple years back but literally it was like um, I was at my local bar 4100 uh, we'd gotten coffee a few weeks before but nothing you know whatever mm -hmm. um, and then yeah she was at the bar and we hung out and did that a couple more times and then one night it was like yo you want to go write a song and then yeah the next day uh, amidst the kind of hazy hangover we like were just like let's do it right. and it was just very like direct and it was fun it was so organic and natural and she's She's great. She's such like, she's so smart. She's so like on it so quick, you know, we, and we both have like very different skill sets, you right. know what I mean? She's like a lyricist. She's very like, just everything's very natural and intrinsic for her. You know, I'm very like analytical about the way I go about writing music and right. I think, and you know, I'm more production kind of guy too. So I think the combo was perfect. It was great. Did you take anything from her? Like uh, the way that she writes, uh, did you take anything from that? Yeah. I mean, I think everybody I write with, I always kind of try to treat it as uh you know, uh, education, you know, on some level and, and even like songs I've written, you know, I've probably written 150 songs, yeah. uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, and a lot of those songs aren't going anywhere, but writing with other people is always a great way to just gain new skills, see how people do things and all those little things add up to something eventually. Right. Now we mentioned earlier, I mean, you've been, you've been MIA for a little bit as far as like releasing music. Um, from your last record to this new EP, like, how do you feel like you've kind of evolved um, as, as an artist? Sure. You know, it, it's so interesting because I feel like between my last uh, record and this EP, I've written, like I said, so many songs and yeah. so many different genres. But uh, I wanted to make sure that my first release was very, like, kind of direct and, like, really, like, like strong in a very, like, uh, you know, kind of pop, digestible way on one end, but also very, like, you know, kind of fun and wild production that's right. very hi-fi. And, and so that was the intention of this one. Um, and so, yeah, this to me is kind of just like the next step so towards something that was more direct with the songwriting. Uh, I call it like hyper alt future pop or something, you know, it's like very like, <laughs> uh, you know, so it's got the very electronic elements, but also, you know, there's still sort of the, the feeling that it's like alternative music, um, which I think, yeah, I think it's just kind of like a, uh, maybe a, a, an evolution, a, a level up from like uh, the last record in the cards in a way. 
And with your previous music, like I, I remember like either I would see your name and I would see an X or I would see an X and I would think of you. Right, right. Um, what happened with, with that kind of symbolism? Did you kind of rebrand? Is that or was that, you know, just for the first couple records that you did? Right. Yeah, I was. Uh, it was so. Yeah, this, uh, I put up my first record, Just Movement, in 2013, and that was like the X, you know, and uh, that was kind of really just a, an, or, an organic thing that was like, you know, I painted on my headphones that I was wearing when I played. Yeah. It was really just kind of arbitrary, and it kind of became my symbol for a while. Uh, with the next record in the cards, I had like all the sort of like. Uh, tarot iconography and stuff like that uh which kind of was my thing um and then yeah i think this time around it was just i kind of feel like the music has evolved in a certain way and, and sort of the aesthetic and and kind of everything that goes along with it has evolved and so yeah we're you know moved away from the x for now maybe yeah. we'll come back we'll see baby maybe i've also noticed that you also have some members with you on stage now um i remember seeing you do everything before right. um what was the the idea behind that and how does it feel to now have people on stage with you Sure. I mean, it's, it's great because it's, you know, I'm still doing, you know, all the live looping. I'm playing a whole bunch of stuff. As you can see, I have a bunch of yeah. electronics, you know, it's not like, uh, yeah, uh, but it's, it was to me kind of like, I really wanted the ability to get away from my rig and just like perform. Right. And some of these songs, I feel like they're better served by me not being a mad scientist up there, you know, like, it's like, like, for instance, like first person is like a love song, you know, mm -hmm. I feel like it's better served if, if the, the performance is more direct and people right. can kind of sense that and so it's been fun i've been able to get out there get up in the crowd and 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 having other people on stage you know i got lonely up there <laughs> so it's nice to have that like energy and that it's just fun it adds to the party and i think i think it kind of uh enhances what i do and also takes uh, some of the weight and responsibility of performing off my shoulders which yeah. is good did you ever feel like there was uh, that disconnect between you and the fans because you were by yourself um performing every night I think sometimes I, I think the disconnect came from that I felt like I was so busy worrying about if everything was going to work on every song and if I was, you know, taking care of all this stuff that sometimes, you know, you kind of miss the forest for the trees a little right. bit. And and there's still a lot of that going on, which I love. Um, but but again, it's kind of a way to start to bridge that gap and also have more like musical interaction moments. You know, I grew up playing in bands and I kind of missed that. Right. So here we are now from your first record to now, like what do you feel has been the biggest challenge in being the artist that you are today? I mean, I think part of it is, it, you know, it's, it's my name, Robert DeLong. Uh, so everything kind of ends up being my responsibility, right? Yeah. Um, I don't have band members to take care of social media right. and also think about songwriting and also think about, you know. I want to blame. Right. <laughs> no one to blame but myself. Uh, 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 and so the biggest challenge has been figuring out how to evolve, you know, because I as a person only has so many ideas, right? right? Um, but that is why collaboration has become such a big part of my songwriting and also my whole live show process. Because I think being able to rub shoulders with other people and, and, and gain new ideas is the only way to kind of push yourself further, at least for myself. And right. I, I think it's been amazing. Now you're getting ready right now. We're here at your rehearsal space because you're about to go on tour with AJR. Um, what can we expect on this tour? Like what, what will be different this time around aside from having, you know, more members on stage with you? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's uh, for I'm doing about half the shows on this tour will be uh, AJR shows and the other half will be headlining shows. Um, and uh, I mean, for the AJR shows, I mean, at least half of the songs are going to be new songs, you know, right. that I haven't really performed much before. I mean, a lot of them from the new EP. Right. Um, and, you know, kind of same with the the live show f that I'm doing for the headlining shows. And it's 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 a lot different. I mean, obviously, we had more gear, you know, uh, you know, more lights, more video stuff, all that right. kind of fun stuff. But then also having the members and just, you know, me in general, I, I think my performance and level of interaction has changed as well. I mean, there'll be some surprises every night. So, you know, stay on the lookout. That, that would be awesome. Now, uh, for those that are not familiar with your sound, let's talk a little bit about your new sound. Tell, tell them why you created the EP that you created today. What is it about this EP that you wanted to release it to the world? Yeah, I mean, kind of like I said, genre wise, it's definitely kind of a... a, a sort of a next step or I would say like a more hi-fi like in your face production sonic adventure yeah. um, but I think uh, like lyrically you know to me I, the, the EP is called See You in the Future and I feel like uh, all of us have a lot of anxieties about the future right uh, you know given the current you know political social climate that we live in and, and in our relationship with technology right. um, and, and that kind of bleeds into our romantic lives and our personal lives as well. And I feel like those are like the four things that I think these songs kind of represent is like sort of my sorting through those feelings, you know, of like technology, like maybe in the song Revolutionary or like, you know, like sort of like the 
I, I feel like like favorite color is blue is like you know someone in a manic state sort of like <laughs> dealing with you know this this new future we live in or, or you know yeah. uh, and so yeah so I think that that was kind of the lyrical or like conceptual uh, 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 thing that I was trying to tie together in the CP uh, and that's why I chose these four songs. Awesome man. Well thanks again for hanging out with me. Good luck on this upcoming tour that you're about to jump on. Congratulations on the EP. I've been listening to it. I can't stop listening to it. So you guys be sure to check out Robert DeLong. He's on tour starting Tuesday. Tuesday baby. Tuesday with AJR and some headline shows. Uh, pick up the new EP. It's called? See you in the future. Thanks for watching on Front Row Live.